Welcome to your script analysis for the theater online course. I am Professor Emily Seal. I um, am excited to teach this course. Traditionally, we don't have a whole lot of theater students who are theater majors who are looking for uh, theater elective credit. Um, and so teaching one or two students at a time has pr proven to be um, take a lot of maintaining. So I'm hoping this online format uh, is a starting point for us to have larger conversations. So please don't feel like you can't make office appointments with me, that you can't, you know, um, email me anytime you have a question. I know the challenges of an online class and I wish that we had, you know, um, 24 students to make help the class make, but um, as we grow the program we're just not quite there yet. So forgive the format. I know some of you like the convenience of an online course and I've set it up to be as convenient as possible. It's called asynchronous the way I've set it up. So you know feasibly if you want to finish all of the semester's work in, in a month you can. You can work ahead. Um, I, it's very rare that I give extensions in an online class so please make sure you've got these dates on your calendar that you're being conscientious of the schedule and of the um, deadlines that you have because uh, I know it's easy to forget I, it's not like with a regular class where we meet every single Monday and Wednesday and I get to see your face and check in on you so I'm putting the onus on you to check in with me, right? Anytime you're feeling frustrated or overwhelmed, my office is always open. Um, so the the basis of the class is this James Thomas textbook, Script Analysis for Actors, Directors, and Designers. Um, I've posted a link in the class of a version I found online. I'm not sure that that's 100% legal to be totally honest. I've tried to contact the textbook supplier and they haven't gotten back to me so I um, can't put it in the bookstore yet. Uh, I'm still working on that process so I hope you're able to either find it online or use that open resource link. Lord willing it's open resource link in uh, your D2L show. So I'm going to go over the plays that I've chosen for the class. I say I've chosen. James Thomas has included a dozen plays that he's analyzing in his textbook. And I picked about half of those plays for you to read here. Um, Raisin in the Sun, I'm surely you've heard of it. I hope you've heard of it. There are multiple media representations of it, films of it. Um, it's available. Almost any library or bookstore will have it. Hamlet is an open resource, which means uh, you don't need to purchase a version of it unless you just want to. Uh, you can. I even included a link, an open resource link, for you to print it off from online if you like to have a printed version. I know I do. Piano Lesson by August Wilson. This play is available in the bookstore because we use it for THEA 1030 for our introduction to theater class. So, um, Lord willing, knock on wood, uh, you know, the creek don't rise, as the southerners say, uh, Piano Lesson should be available in Motlow bookstores. Death of a Salesman. Uh, this one, Arthur Miller's Estate, is a one of our newer plays and so it's not available for free online. You'll need to go out and find a copy of that but once again most libraries are going to carry it. It won a Pulitzer. It's a very fundamental play. Uh, Ibsen is open resource. Uh, it's not Ibsen's most famous work, The Wild Duck, but I'm really glad that Thomas included it because it's a great a great uh, version. Probably the Ibsen play you're most familiar would be Doll's House. That's sort of his um, most famous work. Bertolt Brecht, Mother Courage and Her Children. I did find a version of this online. I don't know if you'll be able to. Um, I personally like the Tony Kushner translation if you're going to purchase it. I would recommend Tony Kushner. Tony Kushner wrote Angels in America. He's a uh, very celebrated playwright and his translation is more readable than the average bear I think so. And lastly, we have another open resource play, which is Oedipus the King. Not to be confused with Oedipus Rex. Same character, but that's later in his life, right? Sophocles wrote uh, what's, you know, one of the Theban plays, the trilogy of plays, and Oedipus uh, 
at Colonus is his last play. So this is Oedipus the King, which is the first in the trilogy. So make sure you read the right one there, not to be confused with Oedipus at Colonus. Oedipus, while he's still king, it ought to say. So I actually, um, last time I was in the MTSU's bookstore, picked up this green version. So um, I don't know if you'll be around Murfreesboro or where you probably, you millennial pirates can probably find all of these online because you have the skills to pay the bills when it comes to technology. So, and these are all great plays and there are even more plays in Thomas's book that he's referencing, um, you know, Three Sisters, I totally think you should read a check off before you call yourself a theater major. Um, you know, there's lots of good plays we could have included here and I just didn't want to work you to death. And I'm excited if for the purposes of this class, you are going to pick a play to analyze, to do your analysis. So I've done analysis over all of these plays listed here. I've um, Each one of the lectures is me analyzing the play based on the terms and concepts that are used in that chapter. But I would like you to pick a play. Um, on the assignment for chapter one, uh, not chapter one, the assignment for the first paper, I've kind of given you some guidelines for picking a play. I asked that it be kind of not a musical because musicals are a little bit more complicated to analyze. I've asked that it be a newer play, but it doesn't have to be. I'm open to discussion. Uh, feel free for it to be a play you've recently worked on. You know, um, as I record this, uh, the two students who I have in this class, you, you guys just finished Midsummer Night's Dream. If one of you want to call dibs, uh, but maybe you're sick of it, maybe you, you lived with that for six months and you've got a different play that you want to pick, um, it can be a play that you've worked on in the past, by all means, and that already has your blood, sweat, and tears poured into it. Or you can, you know, get to reading some new plays, but I know uh, as students you're always on a time crunch, so um, whenever you do come up with a play, just send me a link. Ooh, all right. Uh, sorry for the technical difficulties. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have a little jokey meme there because please, as we deal asynchronously, as we email each other and message each other and put things on discussion boards, it can be really easy for our tone to be misunderstood. Please take the time to write articulately, use your best grammar. Um, when you email me, tr try to make sure that the tone is respectful. Uh, you know, I know that it's just easier when you're not face to face to be disrespectful. So, so the kind of the check-in point every Sunday night at midnight, I have a quiz for you there, either a quiz or a paper. And that quiz is over all of the, the modules so far in the class. And we'll go over what's in a module in just a second. Um, every week you'll have a discussion question. And those are usually reflective of the readings. You have two papers to do for this class. Um, both are due in the second half of the semester. I really can't help that. They're cumulative papers. They're papers that you're learning the concepts along the way and then you're applying them. I would recommend, you know, this class is asynchronous. You can turn that paper in as soon as you are ready to turn it in. Um, and I'll be happy to grade it whenever you turn it in. So, um, you know, if you want to go ahead and read the assignment for the paper, then as you're reading the textbook, which is sort of the way that you you use that as a manual to write the paper, right? Um, then that can help you guide your reading. I am asking you to come and make an appointment on ground um, for the final exam. And that exam is 20 questions, multiple choice. It's all terms from the Thomas textbook or concepts, terms or concepts from the Thomas textbook. So when I have terms to know for every module, those terms will the ones that'll be on the final exam. All of them will be quiz questions that you've already seen, so no surprises for the final exam. I don't include any of the quiz questions over the reading on the final exam because I know when you're reading plays, you get them mixed up and there's a lot of them and on top of reading your own play. So all the final exam questions are just over the James Thomas text. So as you sit down to sort of prepare for the final exam, you no longer have to worry about the quiz questions that say anything about the literature, the dramatic literature. So what's in a module? Jazz hands. First you want to read, um, you know, for these analysis, they are dense chapters. They are full of heavy concepts. So please don't wait and do all your work the day the assignments are due. 
because it's just those you might have to go away and take a walk and think about it and come back to it you might need to compare it to a textbook you know your literature textbook or compare it to um, an online definition because it's really dense information obviously you want to read the play before you take the quiz I have given you a lecture over every chapter or chapters every module has a lecture included on it although I do reserve the right to ask you about something that wasn't included in the lecture so I might ask you how the play ended for example and I might not have covered that in your lecture but I'm um, you know that's partially for me to assess that you've actually read these plays and read this material um, then every module I have a discussion question as I've already described described <laughs> described uh, I have terms to know in every module so that before you take that assessment you can make sure that you've at least taken notes over what those terms are right and often what's on my PowerPoint is what is included in the textbook I have people ask me can you upload your PowerPoints and I really I don't want to do that I know other teachers do that but I feel like you need to be present in the moment and um, there's been a lot of studies that show if you're taking notes if you're writing things down it helps you to learn the information to write it the physical act of writing it so I don't want to just spoon feed you all of the information and um, I think it's going to help you to digest it um, if you are the one writing it of course I'm not there when you take the quiz I can't tell if you're taking an open note quiz or close quote uh, a closed note quiz but of course when you take your final example final exam you're not allowed to have your notes and so really the the weekly assessments are there to hold you accountable for the work along the way so that when we come to the end to that big proctored final exam that's worth a hundred points that you are ready to go right that's my way of um, trying to prepare you for that but really all of this script analysis is fundamental to your understanding of how to approach a process how to be a creator right if you read the text closely if you understand the text well you're gonna be all the better of a theater artist for it so I hope you enjoy this class please I know this is like the fifth time I've said it keep the lines of communication open knock on my door send me an email um, you know if you're Facebook friends with me send me a message let's stay in contact um, let's have coffee and talk about your play and help you problem-solve um, I I really enjoy this work and I hope you will as well thank you for listening and thank you for registering for script analysis for the theater